Event number nine for the individuals at Swim Paddle. We are back out at Lake Monona, and as Dan Bailey mentioned, this is the latest ever in a CrossFit Games competition that we have been in the water. The men are going to start things off first. One more look at the overall standings for them, where Noah Olson comes in 15 points up on Matt Fraser. Bjorgren, Carl Gumanson, three points up on Scott Panchik for that third and final spot on the podium. Women's overall standings, Tia Claire Toomey, 85 points up on Kristen Polta, and then it's Jamie Green who leads Kerry Pierce by 27 points. Another thing about that prone paddleboard when they get on it, it's not a stable implement to no, deal with. No, it isn't. Any rocking left to right it can eventually tip you over we and roll, roll into the water, right? So I think I saw a, a little video clip of the old Dan Bailey <laughs> doing that himself at the games one year. Did you fall in the drink, Dan? I took a, I surfed a wave on the way in and sang to Ben Smith on the way back as well. <laughs> we were halfway there, might have thrown a Bon Jovi line out. All right, we are underway on the start of the swim. And Chase, you know a lot about this, but this kind of mass start, I mean, this is chaos right here. This is chaos and it's also very violent. When you're in the water, there's kicking, there's grabbing, there's elbows, because nobody really cares. It's different than a mass start on a run where you know people can see what you're doing. But when it comes to the water, it's super important to try to get ahead early. I would put mass start into quotation since it's only 20 athletes coming in, both men and women. But if you can't, if you don't know what you're doing, it becomes very daunting. Like you take one kick to the face and that just might be the end of your event. And the Australians are out front early. The men will be wearing the dark caps. The women are wearing the light caps. And it's Matt McLeod and Tia Toomey who are out front on this 1,000 meter swim. They have to go out and around and then back and then they will pick up their paddles and then they will navigate the same course. 2,000 total meters, 1,000 swim, 1,000 on the paddleboard. Ninth event here to kick off Day number four, the final day of competition at the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games. The numbers they are wearing on their swim caps correspond with their placement on the overall leaderboard. 74 degrees, it's a beautiful day here in Madison, Wisconsin. Great day for a water event. It is a great day, because if you look at how calm the water is with no wind, uh, that's really going to help a lot of these athletes because a part of open water swimming is being able to spot the target or your, your turnaround point, right? And so if every time you pick up your head and swallow a chunk of water, over a thousand meters, that's going to be a big belly full of water. And Chase, end. you mentioned, or well, to your point of the glassy water, how important it is it to get out in front being a part of that glassy water, being able to swim into that uh, fresh, clean uh, water rather than being in the chop being created by people who are in the front. It's two folds and I feel like it depends on your skill level as a swimmer. If you're a great swimmer, it's vital. Clean water, no one's in your face, you can just sight on your own. If you're a bad swimmer, you actually want to try to tail off on mm -hmm. somebody who's a, a better swimmer than you. Because if you can park behind someone, A, that knows how to sight better than you, and exactly. that just means they can look where they're going because that's a hard skill to do in open water. But two, drafting in the water is so, has such a massive positive effect. If you can tail on someone's toes and just follow those, it's a good place to be if you're not the strongest swimmer in the world. Well, and that'll actually be true on the paddleboard as well. You can very much draft on a paddleboard, but it's doubtful a lot of these folks know how to do that. The Australians continue to lead. It's Matt McLeod at number eight in the dark swim cap. Next to him is Tia Toomey in the light swim cap. Again, the numbers that they are wearing on their caps correspond with where they stand on the overall leaderboard. Men and women competing at the same time, but not against each other. They will be scored separately. The thing that I'm interested in seeing once they come in from this swim, on that narrow paddleboard, paddleboard, there's really two techniques that you can use. One, you can be laying on your belly, paddling like normal, hopefully that you're not gonna fall off just using your arms. The other is a uh, paddling from your knees. Right. So when you're able to do that, you're actually able to activate more core to extremity movement. You're able to use your midline to kind of push your arms through the water. It is a way faster method to move through the water. In 2015, I remember Con Porter doing that as he passed me at great speed <laughs> on the paddleboard. So, the Australians are out in front now. I'm wondering if any of them are going to be able to hop on that paddleboard, use that technique yeah, to further li their lead. Why is that technique so hard? Oh, because the, of balance. the balance. Yeah. The balance. Yeah. The very narrow paddleboard, any movement to the left or the right will roll you right into the water. Right. I'm actually uh, very impressed that Tia right now has such a huge lead on Amanda Barnhart. I don't know if that's uh, Amanda playing a specific um, a game right now, or if Tia is just really that good of a swimmer. 
Oh, and you look at Tia, the difference between Tia and Matt McLeod is that Tia has a very short stroke in terms of her arms coming out of the water. She'll enter just in front of her face, but she has a good reach where you see Matt McLeod just below her. He has a much longer stroke. And so what you see between the two is that Matt has a much more comfortable, long technique stroke, which is very beneficial for something like a thousand meter. Tia is just strong. You can see the power that she has. So yes, she's in the lead, but she is working a lot harder than I would say Matt. Now they're not competing against each other, but we said earlier is how important it is on the thousand meter swim in terms of time it takes to do the event. A thousand meters upwards of 20 minutes, probably more towards 25 for most of these athletes because of the distance. Now if it's a legit thousand, we've heard, we've seen distances yeah. in the past where it's like, it was a 500 meter, I was like, they didn't break the world record. If that, was, <laughs> that was 300. Yeah. But it's gonna take twice as long as the paddleboard event will do. And if you can put distance between them and what these two athletes, especially Matt McLeod, is that he's going to finish this event comfortably on the first half of the swim. Because if you're a swimmer, it's, it's the difference between, I was, I'll put myself, me doing an Olympic lift versus an Olympian, right? Mm -hmm. I can do it, it looks like Olymp you know, it right. looks like the snatch, but then there, that's the night and day difference. If right. you are a swimmer and you have a swimming background, not just you practice it, you can do this thousand as almost active recovery and be minutes ahead of the rest of the field. And there's not enough time to catch you on a paddleboard. This is the pack behind McLeod and Toomey as they are on the first the trip out, I should say, on this initial 1,000 meter swim. They have to go around that buoy and then back and then they'll get their paddle boards. But things are certainly sort of started to separate out here on this initial 500 meters out. And Chase, there was a time not that long ago where you would it was almost comical when you would watch cross hitters try to swim. And if you were just just basically proficient at moving through the water, you could smash these events. Yeah. What are you trying to say, <laughs> Sean? <laughs> it, Present company not included. I, I liken it to the weightlift, the weightlifting community watching us all do Amanda in 2010. Right. <laughs> just we can totally, do it. totally pooping on the snatch. Right? <laughs> and when you look back, myself included in that, and what we saw in 11, 12, and Watching people how to swim, it was like trying to watch Arnold Schwarzenegger swim in Predator. Yeah. It was like, actually, you know what, he did a pretty good job. <laughs> um, but the training that they have put in and understanding is that swimming is such a foreign movement to do. Yeah. You can fake a run, you can fake a bike, you cannot fake a swim. Yeah. It requires a lot of training, and athletes have been living in the pool since this has been involved, and they know it's been in the games every year, and it should be here to stay as a good test. And so it is nice to see good swimming out on the, on the lake. But you bring up, Chase, they've been, a lot of these athletes have been swimming in a pool. Swimming in a pool with a lane line to track is wildly different than swimming open water. Right, so when you when you open water swim, like Chase was saying, you have to sight, you have to pick something so you don't end up just zigzagging all over Lake Monona. Uh, and these athletes obviously have that huge orange buoy to use as their sight where every couple of strokes, you pick your head up and you make sure you're on track. But if you're used to just following a lane line and waiting for the wall, open water swimming is gonna really catch you by surprise. Well, Tia Toomey and Matt McLeod are getting set to make the turn back to shore on the second half of this 1,000 meter swim. Toomey's in the white, Matt McLeod is in the left, and the two Australians are way out in front here. Remember, men and women are competing together, but they're scored separately. Now, I was talking earlier about how long it'll take for an okay swimmer about, if you can hold a two minute, 100 meter pace, you are a good swimmer. Right. You're capable, well, I'll say you're a capable swimmer. You're not a good swimmer. That's actually not that good. Um, you're a capable swimmer. If you are a good swimmer, holding a 130 pace for 100 meters is not hard to do mm -hmm. at all. And that's a five minute difference between you and a good swimmer. When you think about that. Well, Tumi and McLeod made the turn around the eight minute mark. So oh, this likely, is this, the, the, likely that this isn't quite a thousand meter swim. To me, it, it looks a little bit shorter. But regardless, this is the longest swim we've seen in the CrossFit Games thus far. 
Toomey and McLeod left of your screen. Toomey is in the white swim cap. McLeod is in the dark swim cap. And these are the athletes who are behind them. And it's hard to pick out numbers on the swim caps, but once we do, we'll try and identify them. That could be Noah Olson. That is Noah Olson. Noah Olson in second place right now. AC Noah, he has a very, very short, choppy stroke, and that works in water polo. You know, when right. you have head up uh -huh. and you have right. short, choppy movement. When we're talking about open water swimming, you need length and you need technique. And so Noah, though he's in a good position with the field, he's working extremely hard. And we got to remember, it's like we still have a thousand meter paddleboard right. after this. I said it's not going to take us long, but it is in no means easy. Yeah. No Olsen second place for the men behind Matt McLeod as he has now made the turn back. I believe that's Amanda Barnhart in the white swim cap, so she's in second, a distant second behind Tia Toomey. The one thing about open water swimming and swimming in general, it's not like going for a long run. I think a lot of times if you're running about, you know, say like a 5K or even a, a you know, two miles is that you can start at a certain pace and you actually can feel better as the, right. the run goes on, even biking to a certain extent. That doesn't happen in swimming. It gets harder and harder and harder because when you get fatigued on a run, you can just kind of, you know, back the pace off and slow down a little bit. You can stop pedaling on a bike. When you're in the water, there is no stop. And if you go slower, it just makes it harder. So that's the challenging part about swimming is that the difficulty of the distance increases as you go. So you can reach the halfway point. No one's going to sit here and negative split, which just means go faster on the second half right. than the first half. It's going to get exponentially harder as they get closer to shore. Well, and wouldn't you say that a lot of that comes down to the breathing? If you're jogging, you, you can more readily control your breath than if you're swimming. With swimming, there is an inherent holding your breath, right, which is counterintuitive to most of us as we start to get more taxed. Tia Tui and Matt McLeod are your leaders. After this, it's that 1,000 meter paddle. Amanda Barnhart sits in second place behind Tia Toomey, so if this holds, and we still have a long way to go in this event, but Toomey can put even more distance between herself and Kristen Holta. We don't know where Kristen Holta is in that pack, but uh, Tia Toomey came in uh, with, a, with an 85 point lead over Kristen Holta, and if she can get Amanda Barnhart between the two of them, she can pick up 20 points. Well, and this also bodes really well for Tia Claire Toomey because as we saw last year, she was one of the few, few female athletes that was able to knee paddle that prone paddle board. And so assuming that she comes in a good distance a, a, ahead of Amanda Barnhart, for her to have that lead on the board has got to be a big confidence booster for Tia. About 12 minutes, 30 seconds unofficially uh, into the race here. And I think it's very deceiving when you look at distance in the water versus what you would approach distance on land is that it looks like about a 50 meter gap between your two leaders and your second and third place or third and fourth place. That's a minute. Right. That's a minute time frame they have right. on these athletes. We're hearing that Matt Fraser is starting to challenge Noah Olson now for second behind Matt McLeod. So Matt Fraser working his way up on Noah Olson, and that's huge for Fraser. But if he only beats Olson by one spot, he still won't overtake him for the overall lead. He'll be five points back. But right now, uh, Matt Fraser challenging Noah Olson for second place behind Matt McLeod. This is definitely something where Noah needs to fight for these points. This is something that he, kind of a wheelhouse event for him, something he's very good at. If there's anything we know about Matt, once we get back into the Coliseum, any indoor arena, mm -hmm. he seems to be incredibly dominant inside of there with borderline being untouchable over the years. So Noah needs to pick up as many points as he can in this swim event and push, not just let Matt kind of cruise in front of him and think, oh, it's okay, I'll still have the lead after this event. Mm -hmm. There is It's Adrian Moonbiler on number seven. So he's back. 
That was Noah Olson, so the seven and the one looking a lot alike, but that's Noah Olson. And uh, he is basically all by himself in second place. So he's held off Matt Fraser and still sits in second behind Matt McLeod. Matt McLeod is in the dark swim cap on the left of your screen. Next to him, Tia Toomey, who is in first place for the women. And look at the distance they're putting on the rest of the field. And the same, here's the, the benefit, there's where you see the sign of a, a, a good swimmer, a true swimmer, is that what does their stroke look like in the beginning of the race and what does their stroke look like at the end of the race? And what you see on Matt McLeod on the left, he still has a nice, good reach. He still breathes to one side the entire time and there's actually nothing wrong with that. A lot of things with distance swimming is that you want to find yourself in a rhythm, whether that's two breaths or two strokes of breath or three, is that he finds a nice rhythm, you kind of settle into that, and when you have the ability to swim, and T is the same way, she doesn't have the cleanest technique in the world when it charges a stroke length for her upper body, but she's so efficient right. under the water. It's just something we can't actually see her do, and she's so strong. So Tia, with that having experience plus a little bit of, I mean, sprinkle a little bit of fitness in there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can handle yourself pretty well in the water. And it's been interesting to see her and Matt kind of stick together. I, I wonder if, um, you know, it was almost more comfortable for them to almost just stay side by side throughout the whole swim. Again, they're not racing each other for a spot here. So in, in a lot of ways, they might have just settled into that togetherness. Unofficially, 15 minutes, 40 seconds have gone by uh, in this event. This is the 1,000 meter swim, the opening portion of this two-part event. The next part, the 1,000 meter paddle. There's a 50-minute time cap here in this event. Tia Toomey on the right, Matt McLeod on the left. They are your leaders. And if you can see in the background, all the athletes scattered across the water, and that just shows you how difficult it is to look where you're going right. while you're swimming. If you see traditional open water races, it's just a single file line mm -hmm. down the length of the lake. And that is the most unique part of open water swimming as athletes are unaware of if they train traditionally in a pool. Yep. Matt McLeod and Tia Toomey getting set to come out of the water here at Lake Monona and they will grab their paddle boards and they will get right back in and traverse the same course. So Toomey is out, McLeod is out. I'm really excited to see Matt McLeod on the paddleboard. It says that he actually has a surf rescue background. So that means, in theory, he should be very proficient at this. These things first showed up in 2015. This is now, I think, the third time that they've been used at the CrossFit Games. And Toomey's off, and McLeod is off. Now Toomey right to her knees and starts to paddle. We'll see if McLeod does the same thing. And there's a perfect example of the difference between the swim pace and the paddle pace. It looks like there's a little motor right. underneath the boats that right. they have going on on the right side of the screen. That's why it was so imperative to get ahead on the swim because the time domain is so much shorter for the paddle. You know, the other thing that knee paddling can do, I, I don't know if you've ever gone surfing or done any sort of paddling, but paddling for any distance I know this sounds funny, but just holding your head up, right, so that you can look becomes extremely tiring on your neck and your shoulders. Uh, so the ability to knee paddle really can save a lot of trap, neck, uh, and shoulder fatigue. Tia Toomey on the right and Matt McLeod on the left, and Amanda Barnhart is getting set to come out of the water. Around the 18 minute mark here unofficially, that duck is not in the competition. <laughs> He's a judge. But has the best seat in the house. <laughs> He's watching for no reps as they come in. <laughs> so Amanda Barnhart is out of the water. 18 minutes, 15 seconds. She sits in second place in this event. Seventh place overall coming in. Now here comes that's Noah a, Olson. That's a solid 1,000 meter course, right? right? That, that is a legit 1,000. 18 something, Tia and McLeod around on 16. Barnhart was actually a minute and 40 seconds behind her. The distance the, didn't look that far. Olson, Bethany Shadburn, James Newberry coming out. There's Bjorven Gumanson, so we have yet to see Matt Fraser. Jamie Green. And I think that was Kristen Holter that we just saw on the left as well. But no one's catching these two. 
is Matt McLeod actually putting me to shame? As I said, that the knee battle would be obviously faster. He's overtaking Tia Toomey, laying on his stomach. But would, it does look like Tia is actually possibly drafting off correct. of Matt McLeod right there. Correct. Work smarter, not harder in this event if you can. Right, and I don't know if you saw, but Matt was originally in the lead. And, they and here's could even Matt be... Fraser coming out of the water. So he is way back in the pack here. Saxon Panchik got out before him. Matt, Fraser with some ground to make up. Matt and Tia could even be sh doing a little shift on who's going to draft off of who. In, in typical paddle races, my husband has actually done some prone paddle racing, there is an etiquette where you can actually draft off of each other and each person switches who takes the lead and the others draft off of them. Could be what's happening between Matt and Tia right now. Correct Fraser back oh. into the water with the paddleboard and he has a lot of ground to make up on the pack. About four or five men got out of the water ahead of him. Correct me if I'm wrong, Annie. If we're looking at people laying down on the paddleboard, we want to see them with those feet kept tight on yep. the back of the paddleboard, nothing dragging in the water back behind them. Exactly. And, and kind of the more traditional right arm, left arm paddle is much more efficient than the kind of two swing paddle that most of these females are doing right here. And I think one thing you'll see the true guys, they'll kind of alternate their feet yeah. in the air, right? Yes, you can see the cloud in the yeah. front is that right hand goes in, left foot goes yep. up, and that little balance on the board. That's exactly what that is. That that tends to help balance the board. Here are your leaders, Matt McLeod for the men, Tia Toomey for the women. And there is no one within shouting distance of them. Now Kristen Holta is out. So Tia Toomey is looking to put significant distance between herself and Kristen Holta in the overall standings. McLeod and Toomey, meanwhile, as Holta gets out of the water, have made the turn. 21 minutes have gone by here. So Noah Olson is in the yellow. He's on the yellow paddleboard in the upper right. I think behind him is James Newberry, who's going to the knee paddle. That was Will Morad who just got out of the water for the men. As still more athletes are finishing up this 1,000 meter swim. That is Catherine David's daughter. Oh. Fifth place overall coming into this event and towards the back of the pack here after the 1,000 meter swim. We haven't said Carrie Pierce's name either. Fact. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob Hepner coming out of the, the water and there it is. Carrie Pierce. 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 She heard us so, talking about her. Once again, I said this yesterday. Don't get too attached to any of these leaderboards because they are going to change event after event. Scott, Scott Panchik. Panchik. Now Scott Panchik out. is out. Back to your leaders, Matt McLeod and Tia Toomey. They seem to be almost chatting with yeah. each other, possibly right here. Not what they had for breakfast. Yep. They, <laughs> they could know. probably have a float, a nice, you know, pina colada, coffee. and just enjoy their their trip back just in here. Kind of pick your hands up and see if you can ride it all the way <laughs> in. <laughs> oh, hey. Yeah, no reason for for Matt McLeod to to exert himself more than he needs here. There's not another heat. He's going to win the event. It would be a second event win of the competition so far. That's actually a massive advantage moving into the rest of the day mm -hmm. because what a thousand meter swim does yep. to you physically in terms of exhaustion. Yeah. Right? You do a thousand meter open water swim only. When you're done, you're depleted. There's just something about swimming. It's, it's four times more just exhausting than other events. And then you toss on another thousand meter paddle. Uh, you know, Dan, you've done both back to back. The paddle after the swim. Oh, it's devastating on your shoulders, your arms, everything. I mean, you know, most of the athletes aren't going to have a whole lot of exposure to this. If they've known their history, they should find some way before coming to the event to get out on the paddleboard. But it taxes your upper body in just a different way than swimming does alone. Tia Tumi and Matt McLeod are just demolishing this Demol right now. I think, I think the next. Uh, female male competitors have just barely rounded that buoy out there. I want to thank CrossFit for pro providing us with the world feed here as we get to enjoy event number nine of the individual competition, the first of we don't know how many events to close out the final day of the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games. So McLeod and Toomey. 
heading to shore. And this will be the fourth event win for Tia Toomey. She's only finished outside the top four twice. That was an event number two and an event number four, the sprint couplet, when she finished 12th. Everything else has been fourth or better. And now the pack behind them. As it looks like James Newbery in the orange paddleboard on the left has passed Noah Olson. Not surprising, another athlete that I believe has some, some surf saving skills from, his, uh, from Australia. The Aussies love the water events. They have typically dominated here whenever we're in the water. And that's not going to change here as Matt McLeod and Tia Toomey, the two Australians coming in together and they are both going to rack up another event win. Second for Matt McLeod, fourth for Tia Toomey. <laughs> and they're going to race each other. It's not even going to matter. But they want to cross the finish line together. And Ozzy Pride on display. Tia Toomey and Matt McLeod. I really? mean, win event nine. To me, that looked like it's like somebody needs to compete against me. This <laughs> right. Could you You're pick it up? You're making me feel like I'm in a like, race. Right. Yeah. Could you pick it up, Matt? I'd like to run right now. Really? James Newberry in the bottom right is now second place for the men. Behind him is Noah Olson. If Olson finishes in third, that would be 80 points. Now the question is, where's Matt Fraser? Right. Well, for Newberry, too, because if Matt's not careful and he loses four to five spots to Newberry, that's 50 points off the board, and Newberry's 30 points closer to the podium. It ain't over till it's over. That's the lesson that we're going to learn today. Past the 26 minute mark. As Tia Toomey and Matt McLeod made this look like a warm-up event. And, and you look at the times that they did, they had about a 16-minute swim and about an eight, eight and a half minute paddle. So that was the that's a just showing you the, the major advantage it has in this event to be a good swimmer. James Newbury looks like he will be the next man to finish, followed by Noah Olson. And Newbury employing that paddle from the knee technique that so many Australians have used on this paddleboard. That's there's not no what you want to see right there. Well, that is, that is like I was talking about. All of a sudden, your head weighs about 2,005 pounds. <laughs> I think I just looked over and saw Dan start shivering with bad memories. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and it looks like we yeah, have we still a, have a another female. woman in the water. Not sure who that is. I believe it might be Anna Fragger. She is the one name that we haven't said yet. So here comes James Newbery. He's going to lock up second place in the event. He'll earn 90 points in the overall standings. Newbery coming in in fifth place overall. And he's now looking to challenge for a spot on the podium. Here's Noah Olson. The overall leader after eight events will keep the white jersey and he will earn 80 points. So now the question is, where is Matt Fraser? Huge finish for, for Noah Olsen right there. Jorgen Carl Gumitsen coming in. So he's going to take fourth. And that's going to move him in front of Scott Panchik for sure. So Gumanson will stay ahead of Panchik for the race of the podium. Here comes Bjorgman Carl Gumanson, fourth place finish for him. And I believe that was Haley Adams that just came in. Jamie Green. Bethany Shadron is out. Haley Adams finished second. So there's Matt Fraser. And he is getting closer to shore. So if Matt Fraser finishes fifth, that will be 60 points. Noah Olson has already locked up third. So Olson will add 20 points to his lead. And Fraser will now trail him by 35 points after nine events. 
Matt Fraser is in. And he will take fifth place in event number nine. That's Kristen Holta. Here comes Saxon Panjic. So Saxon Panjic, Jacob Hepner, Adrian Moonweiler, Will Morad, and then Scott Panjic have yet to finish this event, but Saxon getting in ahead of his older brother. He's going to take sixth. And here comes Kristen Holta, who is trying to do some damage control and keep herself in the top three. And there's Carrie Pierce. As Jamie Green has already finished. And I am just so surprised to see where Barnhart is shaking out in this race. It is a bit of a shock that she has fallen that far back in the pack. Barnhart has actually already finished. She came across when oh, we weren't looking. She, when we didn't have the camera on, she finished fifth in the event. So Amanda Barnhart's already in. So here comes Kristen Holta. She's going to finish sixth place. So Holta is in. So she will surrender 20 points to Jamie Green. She was up by 45. And now here comes Jacob Heppner. <coughs> and it's right off the bat, you see Heppner actually dragging his arms forward. Right? <laughs> so you're trying to reach to swim, except you pull yourself backwards and then, you know, it's. Two it's steps forward, one step back. It's yeah. the old cotton eye show <laughs> technique. Yeah. It's usually what you do when you want to stop. It's like riding a bike and tapping your brakes every time you pedal twice. <laughs> Kerry Pierce getting set to come across the finish line for the women. Jacob Hepner will take seven. Three men left in the water. Scott Panchik, Adrian Moonweiler, and Will Morad still have yet to finish. So Jacob Hepner in at seven. It's Catherine David's daughter we just took a look at, and here comes Kerry Pierce. Well, Pierce, Pierce made up will a finish lot seven. Of time she on did that on the paddleboard. Board. Yeah. There's that upper body pulling. Shoulder stamina for you. Catherine David's daughter and Scott Panchik look to be next to finish. David's daughter looking to lock up eighth place. She will not gain ground on the women in front of her in the overall leaderboard. Tia Toomey, Kristen Holta, Jamie Green, and Pierce have all already finished. David's daughter sits in fifth. But Anna Fragu is way back in the pack, so David Zotter won't surrender any ground to sixth place Fragu. When you look at the paddleboard, you see a lot of these athletes that are so tired and they lay face down. The problem is, is that that actually limits your stroke. Right? Right. When you're a bit more upright, you can reach further yep. into the water. Yep. When you have that, it pushes your hands out to the side. You can't have as good of a pull. Catherine David's daughter is out. Scott Panchik is out. David's daughter is going to sprint to the finish. I believe that's Turi Helga daughter behind her. So David's daughter is in and she will take eighth place. That'll be good for 30 points. And here comes Turi Helga daughter in ninth, which means Fragu will finish in 10th and she will earn 10 points in the overall standings. Looks like that's Will Morad coming in. Yeah, Will Morad, one of two men still left in the water. Adrian Moonweiler is the other one. Morad is out of the water and he's going to lock up ninth place easily. So Moonvider will take 10th and Fraga will take 10th. They're the only two athletes left in the water. Morad is not moving fast. He's got a bandage around his leg there, it looks like. Something keeping his left leg tight. Well, we saw that last night when he wouldn't make an attempt at 315, ah, the opening barbell. He kind of grabbed his hamstring a little bit and we speculated as maybe that was what was bothering him after the sprint event. And clearly, that looks to be the case. That's Adrian Moonweiler. He's the last man left in the water. So to recap, Tia Toomey 
for the women wins the event. Haley Adams and Bethany Shadburn rounding out the top three. On the men's side, it's Matt McLeod. He gets his second event win. James Newbery takes second. Noah Olson takes third. And Matt Fraser takes fifth. On the women's side, Tia Toomey gets 100 points. Kristen Holta, who sat in second, finishes in sixth place. That is good for 50 points. So Toomey will add 50 points onto her lead over Kristen Holta. The one thing I'm, as I'm watching this event unfold and kind of realizing all the volume of pulling that has happened over the last three days, you had the legless rope climbs, you had the over 300 pull-ups, pegboards, mm -hmm. what your lats go mm -hmm. through on long distance swimming, mm -hmm. I don't think people really truly understand because they think shoulders. And it's right. really, if you just reach underneath your armpit and grab that sucker right there, that gets so unbelievably tight. Yeah and what that is going to do to these athletes moving forward. If they haven't taken care of themselves in between events over the weekend, they might see some repercussions coming in in the next few events. Adrian Moonweiler is getting set to finish up for the men, and that'll do it for their event as he is the last man out of Lake Monona. 10th place finish for him, 10 points in the overall standings. Moonviler is out, and Moonviler will take a stroll across the finish line, and that'll do it for event nine for the men, as Matt McLeod earns his second win of the competition. It's an Aussie sweep. Tia Toomey wins on the other side for the women. It's her fourth event win, and in nine events, have both Tia individual has only uh, outside athletes the top who have twice. won the event here, Tia Kartumi and Matt McLeod. Not only were you guys uh, both the winners, but you had a little bit of a foot race there in the end. And I think Tia came in first and beat the boys. Why, why the sprint in the end? What was going on there? Well, let's just make sure it's clear. Matt reckons he didn't hear me say at the end, hey, we're sprinting at the end. <laughs> But I swear I said that, so <laughs> as soon as we're out the water, boom. <laughs> and, and how did you find the energy? I mean, what was it like coming out of the lake and then hitting the pavement and going going for the sprint there? Uh, well, I mean, obviously we are competitors, but not racing against each other. So we were, when it came to the board lap, we actually helped each other a little bit. Um, he, he drafted off me for a little bit, I drafted off him, and then we kind of realized how far in, ahead we were. And then there was just really no point exerting extra energy. Uh, so we just kind of just, I guess, in a way, slowed it down on the way back. So as soon as we got to the land, we'll, uh, we had a bit of energy. And Matt, let me ask you the same thing, sort of getting to the to the point in the end where you were helping each other out. I mean, what was it like out there up until then? You had the swim and you had the paddle. Um, yeah, the swim was, it was, uh, it was pretty hard on the way out, but sort of got into the rhythm, didn't really get any worse, sort of still where we were, and then the board was just, just keep moving so they don't catch up, really, yeah. Well, nice job, you guys. Congratulations on the win here this morning. Great work.